Welcome, everybody, to the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. My name is Ross Benjamin. I'm your host, and uh, it is Tuesday, December the 5th. And like every Tuesday morning, I am joined by my trusted colleagues, Mr. Jesse Shul and Mr. Sean Higgs, all three of us of gamblersworld.net, which is our sponsor, folks. Uh, 10 great handicappers there, and it's uh, at gamblersworld.net when you purchase any of our single game or multi-game daily packages, as well as subscription plans of 30 days or less, uh, we guarantee our picks. And that simply means if you don't win, you don't make a profit, we will credit your account back the exact amount of your purchase price. And you can use that in any which way you like at any time you wish. Anyway, without further ado, Sean, how are you, my man? Pretty good. I'm just, uh, I didn't know if I was going to throw into more parenting tips here in the live show as we were just talking off air of how I <laughs> raise my children and the cold yeah. truth of life. I don't and think we can air that stuff, Sean. <laughs> Not yeah, if we want to keep the show on the air. Why? No. Look, Listen, there's no comfortable what? lies, only only hard, hurtful, what was it, hard truths and comfortable lies? It's definitely hard truth yeah. in, at the Higgs house. <laughs> Better, you know, it's, it's bad enough that I have to, uh, answer the comments on some of your picks and, and opinions, even though they've been good, but you know, the way, uh, yeah, let I mean, people complain about big opinions, What I mean, you mentioned uh, the gamblers world leaderboard. I just looked, I did a quick look number two mm -hmm. last 30, 60 and overall. So I'm number, I'm the number two guy. So I'll never be number yeah. one, but that's good. I it's guess it. you don't want to be the king. Everybody tries to kill the king, but the prince just kind of goes along. Nobody wants to go to prince. Yeah. You know, it's the king. Everybody's the answer to the king. So I'll, I'll be I'll be number two. It's fine. But I am number one in NFL college, and I think three. So what are you hockey. saying? I'm a prince? Are, are you number <laughs> no, two? No, you're the king, aren't you? Who, I don't yeah, know who's king. ever number one over the. Yeah, number one. So I'm the king, I guess. Uh, king Ross. Sense. You're, you're, you're right. the oldest cat in the house, so it's good that you're the king. <laughs> you're channel, you're the boss. I guess that makes me the court jester or what? Ross is yeah, the boss. Yeah. Yes, sir. Anyway, um. Some good rankings for all three of us at gamblersworld.com, folks. You could uh, go to the gamblersworld.net, excuse me. You can go to the uh, homepage there, and on the right-hand side, you'll see the leaderboards, and you could even search uh, in specific areas like the NFL, college football, and it'll tell you everything you need to know in terms of that. If you go on to each individual handicapper under experts uh, and click on their name, it'll give you their current win streaks, uh, some hot streaks that are available on their individual pages, as well as how they've done in the last seven, 30 days in 90 days. So uh, there's everything's transparent right there for you at uh, gamblersworld.net. Now, Jesse, um, I didn't mean to steal your thunder here, but uh, go ahead and tell the folks uh, how you're doing of late. Yeah, I guess I'm on the leaderboards with NFL, number two last 30 days, number three la uh, for the season, uh, five straight winning Sundays, 13-2 and two straight up with my picks uh, the last five Sundays. So uh, NFL is hot. College football, I was one and one on Saturday. I had been killing it with my college football uh, top picks. My top pick this Saturday was Tulane. And I got to say, it was a mis you know, sometimes you lose a game and you say, bad beat or whatever. This one was a mistake on my part. I totally underestimated how good that SMU defense was. Um, they were phenomenal. Yeah. I'll probably look at them in their bowl game, but uh, NFL red hot, uh, 13 and two last five Sundays. So uh, looking forward to this Sunday for sure. 13 and two is pretty good every time I check. So uh, in any event, folks, I'm coming off a six and two week in the NFL. So pretty happy about that one, two and one. Uh, with my uh, <clears throat> college football conference championship games on Saturday. Unfortunately, lost the big play on Oregon on Friday, uh, but overall pretty good. So uh, I know a lot of you frown on when we uh, start promoting ourselves. And, you know, folks, the bottom line is this. It's business 101. Um, and I know all of you just want us to get to the free picks. As a matter of fact, if it was up to most of you, you'd just want to hear who we like and not even an analysis. But that's not the format of the show. If you're looking for a, um, a format like that, there's plenty of them out there, okay? Uh, but we're not one of them. And, uh, you know, let me ask you this, folks. And I said this on the last show, and I'll say it again because I didn't say it in front of these two guys. 
And uh, I, I know that they agree with me. When was the last time your boss asked you to work for free? So in any event, all right, let's, so we're talking college basketball today. And uh, Jesse's going to be looking at a real interesting matchup, the North Carolina Tar Heels uh, against the UConn Huskies. Do, do, wives, do, wives, do wives asking you to do stuff around the house? Is that like working for free? That's um, not the boss. That's the government, Sean. <laughs> um, North Carolina and UConn at Madison Square Garden tonight, 9 o'clock. It's the second game of the doubleheader. Sean will be covering the first between FAU and Illinois. Uh, nice treat for anybody who goes to the Garden tonight because uh, four real good teams. And yeah. uh, UConn right now, minus six and 152. Jesse, uh, we caught a lot of heat last week when Sean used Tennessee against North Carolina as a free pick. And we agreed with them. And uh, boy, oh boy, the North Carolina fans came out of the woodwork. But it doesn't matter what they think. It matters what Jesse Shule thinks about the point spread, folks. We are a sports betting show. So, again, this isn't the ACC huddle. This isn't the Paul Feinbaum show. This is a sports betting show. Jesse, in that regard, give us your take on this matchup. Yeah, Ross, when I wake up in the morning, I've got plenty of things on my mind as far as goals and things I want to do, and and uh, befriending Tar Heels fans isn't one of them, um, and they're not gonna they're not gonna like what I have to say about this one. But uh, we did talk about uh, UConn on last week's show as well because they were at Kansas, a road game, I believe it was, and yes. only getting three and a half points, and I said, man, you know. That says a lot because Kansas, if you look over the last decade or two, that's a team that doesn't lose on their home court very often. Um, and I was intrigued by that line. I think I fell short of saying that I liked one side or the other, but it, what did they lose by four? And it was a half, yeah. failed to cover by a half a point. I mean, that's a pretty good result um, considering that was the, the Huskies' first non-conference loss in two years, I believe. They, of course, uh, ran the table in last year's tournament. Uh, they ran the table in non-conference play last year. And this looks like a good bounce-back spot for the Huskies to me. Of course, neutral site at Madison Square Garden. Tar Heels, pretty damn good team, but much better at home than they are on the road. Of course, this isn't the road, but uh, halfway there being a neutral site game. Uh, I guess the, the freshman, stud freshman for... Uh, the Huskies, Stefan Castle. He's only played two games this year, uh, 29 points in just 21 minutes per game. So 66% field goal percentage. Based on those numbers, you could all, it, it looks like he could be their best player. And he hasn't played in, the, he's missed, I think, the last six games. So uh, he's expected to return tonight. That should give them a boost. Um, you know, I really wanted to be on the Huskies on the opening line here. I think it opened it at four, four. Uh, yeah. bet up to six. Uh, I'm still going to go with the Huskies bounce back spot. Um, you know, the Tar Heels are a good team, but I think the Huskies are a better team. So I'll, I'll take UConn. UConn minus the six over North Carolina. You uh, Tar Heel fans that chimed in the last time, feel free to chime in again. It's okay, you know, but just keep in mind, uh, we are a sports betting show. And in this case, we're asking – UConn to beat your team by more than six points to cover the spread. You know, Sean, Jesse mentions the neutral site, but um, this is one of those may not be as neutral as it seems because UConn uh, very close in proximity to the garden in New York, still, you know, yep. a good ride, but uh, when it comes, and I know North Carolina travels well, but I can't help but think uh, that some of this line, that's incorporated into it because uh, otherwise, if this game was being played at UConn, we'd be looking at UConn as say anywhere from a nine to a 10 point favorite. And that would seem awfully high against a quality team like you, uh, North Carolina. Yeah. I mean, Carolina is ranked in the top 10 and this is again, yeah. the, fi the five or six, I guess you baked. I mean, they've played how many games here in the big East tournaments too. So uh, familiar with the rims or whatever. I mean, uh, but let's just look at the line too. It's, I'm with Jesse on UConn, obviously, here. It's it's a line that says, easy to take the dog, 
But when it's kind of higher like this, I kind of lean to the fade as opposed to the dog. Like they're, I don't, I don't know why they have to entice you to take a top ten team getting any kind of point. I mean, if they if they play like they did in the first half against Tennessee, I mean they annihilate. It was what sixty one to thirty five or something. That game wasn't close from the. They just mauled them from the door. And again, we're not kicking in. North Carolina's a really good team. They're a top ten team. That you know they were in a championship game two years ago. It's, it's a good club. The line here says Huskies to me. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. I'll follow Jesse's lead here. Take UConn. Yeah, I mean, again, I you know, like Chip Chirimbus likes to say, this is a heavy line, and what he means yeah. by that is they're begging you to take the underdog. So uh, I, I I would agree with both of you gentlemen. And once again, all three of us are in agreement and going against North Carolina. And I promise you, folks, it's not personal. If you're a North Carolina fan, it's just our job to pick. Uh, a winner against the spread in, in, in a certain situation. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, this situation, we all like uh, UConn laying a six against North Carolina. All right, Sean, another great – go ahead, Jess. Uh, if they want to bring the heat in the comments, I, I actually – I don't mind taking a bit of heat in the comments, but I have the utmost respect for somebody who wants to come at me before the game starts. Coming at me after it's over with the uh, – you know, you know, anybody yeah, can do yeah. that. So please, please refrain from uh, playing Monday morning quarterback. And if you want to come at me and say I'm wrong about this or that, let's do it before the game tips off. Yeah. And then uh, there's always, always the p- people who don't get monitored in this business, but say they have a great record and always uh, come to social media to tell everybody once the game is completed that they had the winner. You know, anybody could do that, folks. The bottom line is, is all three of us. Uh, I mean, if you go to a sport, uh, uh, a, uh, a site like uh, Sports Capping, for example, um, or even my own personal site, rbwins.com, uh, right, you, you could tell who we have uh, five minutes after the game starts because that's how they post it. Uh, but in any event, because of live betting these days, uh, we don't do that at, uh, at our site right now gamblersworld.net because it's a, a lot easier for people to come, come in and I'm giving you a tip here. Uh, if you're alive better, you, you could find out a lot of times what, what a handicapper has five minutes after the game starts. So uh, that's why we put a 90 minute delay on our picks over at gamblersworld.net. Anyway, Sean, a real good matchup here. Number 11 FAU against a very good Illinois team. Um, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time start at Madison Square Garden. This is the first game of that doubleheader that includes North Carolina and UConn. Uh, Florida Atlantic is a two-point favorite here. 146 is the total. Um, if you're looking at the money line, FAU is minus 135 and Illinois is plus 115. Uh, you know, this FAU team, and I don't think a lot of people realize, I know that um, they got to the final four last year, but I don't know if a lot of people realize they return all five starters from that team. And uh, you look at their schedule, uh, I'm, I, I am baffled to the nth degree, wondering how they lost to Bryant at home as a 23-and-a-half-point favorite. And then you look at the rest of their schedule, they got some signature wins already this year, Sean. So uh, Illinois, are they going to be up to the task against this uh, upstart FAU program? Uh, listen, my uh, my cousin Con's gonna be upset because he's a big Illini guy, but I'm gonna go with the Owls here. Uh, money line, why not do money line one thirty? I think this is gonna be a, a close game. And we, we talked about UConn and NCB in this tournament. How about the little small? I mean, it is a Final Four team, but this is still kind of a small school. Usually, the small schools don't yeah. really get invited over here to the uh, Dickie V Classic here in MSG. I, I, but I'm going Florida Atlantic, as you mentioned. Everybody's back. Uh, Basically, the entire team, the the loss to Brian, as you mentioned, is just odd to me. Uh, Illinois is a tough squad. I, if it was more points, I'd be like, ah, maybe I take the dog here. But again, this is kind of like we talked about the last line. And I look at these games where I see even if it's a and, – and they're a public kind of team now, right? People talk about them because of last year's run of the tournament. So they're kind of thought of as a little public darling. And I heard some people say, oh, I'm not really sold on them this year. Like how I'm all for early November, December basketball. I want teams with four or five starters back with continuity in the system. I think that's, you know, carries over. It's, you know, I think this team is legit. Uh, 
it's also I look at it as a smaller conference, right? They're the what the AAC or whoever they're, they're in the American verse. Any anytime I see this smaller kind of mid major conferences favored over and cross out being ranked teams and, and household names, I like the smaller conferences always over a bigger conference when I see them favored. The lines makers know things here. Um, but again, back to FAU in this game, I just like them. I'm, I'm a fan of their team last year. I'm a fan of the team this year. And this is a big game for them. To go in here, win this game, maybe knock off NC or, or UConn next game, it's just time to prove themselves. Like, yeah, your Final Four team last year, but people still are like, ah, Florida Atlantic. I don't know. They got a big seven-footer. I like the team. I think that's a it's a fun team to watch. Well, let's go Owls. Yeah. Um, I can't disagree with you there. You know, you look at their last – since that Bryant loss, they beat Butler by five. Texas A&M, a real good club, by uh, seven. Uh, Virginia Tech, 84-50. to 50. Liberty, who was undefeated at the time when they played, 83-58. Uh, to 58. College of Charleston, 90-74. to 74. Uh, In all five of those games, they scored 83 points or more. Uh, in all five of those games – yeah, I mean, in all three of those games, or all five of those games, excuse me, Sean, they've shot 52% or more. So this is a team that could really uh, put up points. They shoot the ball extremely well. They share the ball very well. Uh, and they have a winning formula in a really good underrated head coach in Dustin May. Jesse, your take. Okay, my take is Dustin that you see May, teams. Excuse me. <laughs> I, I wanted to correct that, Jesse, because you know how people are particular here. So Dusty May, not Dustin May. Anyway, go ahead, Jess. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, uh, FAU put themselves on the map by making the Final Four last year. And I generally like to look for teams like that in those kind of positions to have a letdown the next year. You think of, like, Mercer beating Duke, Fairleigh Dickinson, uh, St. Pete's at it, you know, put themselves on the map in the tournament couple years back, um, UNC Wilmington, these kind of teams. And, you know, what, what that does is the public falls in love with them. Oh, what did we last see? This team was kicking butt in the tournament. I love this team. I want to bet on this team. And my general process is whenever the public falls in love with something without really knowing too much about it, you want to go the other way. And I tried that early this season when uh, FAU played Loyola Chicago and uh, they whooped him, and I lost, and I was wrong, and I'm not a dummy, and I'm not going to keep on doing that. I didn't. It took me about three weeks to figure out that this this team is for real, and uh, yeah, I, I'm not in any hurry to go against them here or or any other week until uh, until the, they become overvalued. And I, I think the books have yet to at, correctly price them, really, or or they're they're not overvalued at this point. They're they're right around where they should be, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, the difference is you mentioned Fairly Dickinson and Farley Dickinson, excuse me. Fairly and, ridiculous. Uh, far- yes, like in Eddie and the Cruisers movie. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> also, cruisers. yeah, well, that's where Eddie said, yeah, we're playing at Fairly Ridiculous and they were playing at Farley Dickinson University. Anyway, um, the other team that you mentioned, Jesse, was St. Pete's. I mean, the difference is, is, is like St. Pete's, what happened with them? Uh, it catapulted the coach to get the job at Seton Hall the next year. And when he left, they, the significant players that were left over on that team all seemed to transfer out because they proved that they could play big-time basketball. Uh, well, not, not only that, most of these mid-majors that have success in the tournament have all five starters or seniors, and then they're all graduated the next year, right? Right, um, exactly. And they, that's they not usually, the they're not, not usually doing it with uh, juniors and freshmen and and yeah. uh, such, right? Which, which is even more uh, of an impressive, impressive uh, accomplishment. I mean, look at this. It, in the Final Four, it's not like they just got there. Uh, San Diego State beat them at the buzzer. In the final four. I mean, this team was that close to playing for a national championship. And they return all five stars, like I said, and they and they returned their head coach who didn't look to go to greener pastures. He knew he's smart enough to know why would I go anywhere else? I got all five of my starters coming back, you know? And uh so good for them, man. It's it's refreshing to see, is what I'm trying to say. So all right, uh, Jesse likes UConn minus six. Sean likes FAU minus 135 on the money line against Illinois. 
Uh, I'm going to look at number 23, Wisconsin, uh, at Michigan State tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Michigan State right now, a five-point favorite in the total, 131.5. You know, guys, a lot of hype surrounded this Michigan State team. Uh, they were a top-five consensus pick in the uh, preseason polls. Uh, and then they come out of the gate and they lose at home to James Madison, which uh, we now know that's not as bad a loss as it looked back then because James Madison continues to be undefeated in a 7-0. and But having said that, they're 4-3 and on the season, and they don't have any signature wins to speak of. Uh, in the three times they've been tested, they played three ranked teams. James Madison, I just alluded to that result. They lose by six to number one Arizona, no embarrassment there, and lose to 11 by 11 to Duke uh, at a neutral site. So every time they've stepped up in class, they've failed to win. Um, so again, that does that not does that make them a bad team? No. Uh, does it make them a team that's uh, a little bit maybe overvalued at this point? Possibly. Uh, but when you look at Wisconsin, they started one and two. Um, but since that time, they rebounded by winning their last five, and that includes quality wins versus number eight Marquette uh, and Virginia, who they blew out. And Virginia at that time was a top 25 team. And right now, if you look at the AP poll, Virginia is actually just outside the top 25. They're the leading vote getter uh, outside the top 25. So you can make a case they're number 26. Um, here's the thing, and I ordinarily don't go this deep, but this really caught my eye, guys. Free throws could come into play tonight, really determine the outcome in terms of who covers this game. And when I look at that factor, it heavily favors Wisconsin. Uh, Michigan State, 66.9% from the free throw line this season. That really cost them in the James Madison loss. And a matter of fact, over the last five, even worse, 64.1%. Wisconsin, 76.5% for the season and 79% over their last five games during this win streak. Um, you know, and then I look at Wisconsin's free throw percentage, and I always recall Wisconsin as being a team who shot a lot of threes that didn't get to the free throw line a lot because they're not that type of team, but this team is. They're averaging 21 free throws a game, and Michigan State averaging around 18, both average giving up around the same amount of free throws as well. And uh, Wisconsin, um, and Michigan State, let me get back to them real quickly. They average three more personal fouls a game than their opponents do. So they're fouling much more uh, than whoever they're facing on average uh, throughout the first seven games. And Wisconsin, over the last three seasons, 9-2 and two straight up and 10-1 and one against the spread versus opponents that average three or more personal fouls per game than the opponents they face. So I'm going to take Wisconsin here as an underdog, plus the five at Michigan State. Guys, uh, let's start with Jesse. Yeah, um, my first thoughts were Michigan State struggled, a couple tough losses, underachieved, ranked fourth, I think, coming into the season. Yep. And you got a home game. It sort of looks like a spot for, for a get-right game for Michigan State. But my memory tells me, that Wisconsin is a team that uh, it doesn't seem to matter whether they're at home or on the road, whether they're winning or losing. They just seem to find themselves in close games that go right down to the wire. A lot of overtime games, a lot of games decided on the final shot. And that, you know, five, five and a half points that you could get looks pretty significant. In fact, I just glanced at the standings from last year. Wisconsin was 11th in the Big Ten. Um, only two Big Ten teams had winning records on the road. Wisconsin was 6-6 six and six on the road last year. That's a pretty damn good road record uh, in the Big Ten. Um, yes. Winning six yeah. games outright, probably half of those losses would have come within that number. Um, makes sense to take Wisconsin plus the points here. Yeah, if they're 6-6 six and six on the road and they finish 11th in the Big Ten, there's a good chance they were an underdog in a majority of those road games, uh, I would think. Uh, I don't have that information in front of me, but I'm taking an educated guess. And they won six out of 12 outright. So to, your, to Jesse's point. Um, also, Sean, you know, Michigan State, they came into the season, like I said, a very hyped team. A lot of it surrounded the fact that they br they're bringing back all five starters. But this is a Wisconsin club with four returning starters as well. And it looks like um, 
the experience has paid more dividend for Wisconsin early on than it has for Michigan State. I like Izzo and the Spartans, but it just seems like every year they kind of start a little slow, right? They're yeah. always like, you think they're going to go in and we're playing on an aircraft carrier against somebody. It's We're in a big tournament. Like they, they're losing to Duke or whoever. You know, like they just play out of the gate as a good team. You're in East Conference. You forget about just being conference. And how about conference playing December anyway? That's odd so early. But like they, they seem to start slow. I, I'm with you though with whiskey here. Uh, now, again, this game's in January, February, different. I, you know, Michigan State at home, sure. All right, you can lay it here. Uh, but here, I'm, I'm with you on whiskey. I had whiskey the other day versus Marquette. Uh, they, they lost to Tennessee, which is, I guess, a kind of a comparable kind of team. But, again, I'm I'm, I'm getting points here. You mentioned a free throw. I was doing a little work. Uh, the, and if it comes down to that, who's going to have the ball? Like, the leading scorer of each team is going to be, like, you're in charge. Well, the, the kid on whiskey is hitting 92% of his free throws, and – the guy in Michigan State's in about sixty-two percent of his free throws. You know, he's in a sixty percent range there. So, uh, uh, good luck. You got to dig deep sometimes. You think it's going to be a close game, so that's a good luck there for you, Ross. But I'll, I'll be with you on the points here anyway. At five, five and a half for Wisconsin. Yeah, it's uh, we're going to take uh, for the show here. Our official picks is we're going to take Michigan or Wisconsin plus the five over Michigan State. Uh, Sean likes FAU minus 135 on the money line over Illinois. Jesse likes uh, the UConn Huskies latest six points over the North Carolina Tar Heels uh, at Madison Square Garden tonight. All right, let's get to uh, each one of you guys and let us know what you may want to share with the audience above and beyond what we shared earlier when we just were talking about rankings, any recent streaks you want to share or anything else you think is a noteworthy item to share with the audience and why they should spend money on both of you. Let's start with you, Jesse. Well, Sunday I had a conference championship rematch game of the year, San Francisco and the Eagles. And man, the Eagles just got crushed. Did you see that, Sean? It was Eagles. Wounded birds. Woo! -wee! They're they looking did not fly. No. Uh, big win for me. Uh, that makes it seven and one. I believe with the uh, top rated NFL plays this season, I've got a game of the year. It's my NFC East game of the year for this coming Sunday. You definitely want to get that at gamblersworld.net. I mentioned before 13 and two, the last five Sundays, that's five straight winning Sundays. Uh, I've had a few bad picks on Thursday night, and Monday night, but I'm staying away from that. For the, for the time being, there will be no Monday or Thursday night games for me sticking to the Sunday plays. So uh, you want to jump on board with that stuff. There you go. Jesse Shule over at gamblersworld.net. A lot of good stuff and reasons why you should invest money with them. And, and don't forget, folks, three day, seven day, 30 day packages. That's the way to go. Now, I know if you dab, dabble in just once in a while, single game and multi game daily packages are great. Uh, that's for you. But I mean, for you, for those of you out there, um, I know a lot of you out there want to chase winning streaks. In other words, you see Sean's or like Jesse 13 and two, and you expect Jesse to keep winning at that rate. He's going to win for you over the long haul, but to expect anybody to continue to uh, on a 13 and two path forever is, is not going to happen. And if you were with Jesse, if you looked at Jesse's numbers a couple weeks ago, when he was stuck in the mud, I warned all of you out there that it's just a matter of time and probably in close proximity in time where he would go on a roll. And here you have it. So, again, folks, it's not always about grabbing who's hot at the moment. It's about the big picture and who's capable of making you money over the long haul. Uh, Sean, tell the folks a little bit about what you got going on, my friend. Well, I was with Jesse on that San Fran nice little win. So I don't, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy about that because I, I hate Philadelphia. Eight and three weekend of uh, NFL on Sunday, I should say. I mentioned my earlier numbers there. So you know you're going to get some NFL. And college football bowls around the corner. I'm looking at a couple of those games already. And college hoops, again, I'm a little slow out of the gate here. I'm a couple games under 500, I believe. Uh, 69 and 79 here on Gambler's World, although I was going over my numbers, and I had a loser on Miami, Florida on Saturday. 14 and a half. They won by 13. I was a one and a half point loser. That was my 20th loss. I had two losses by three. So three or less points, I have 20. 
I mean, think of, or 18 if we go under three. So you're right it, there. It's it's one of those things we talked about. Yeah. Like I said earlier, with my college and NFL football, we talked about Jesse. Like you're just kind of you're mm-hmm. there, but you're not quite there. And you know, listen, the ball bounces, so it is. If, you know, I, I catch ten of those, and it's a different ball game. And and you know, I'm up a little money, but it is what it is. You know, we talk about our our, our records, win or lose. You always get the truth from everybody here, and. You know, college basketball spinning. We'll, we'll see what happens. Obviously, I'm going to get on that roll, and when it comes, it'll be like my college and NFL. It won't be a 13 and two run like Jesse. It'll probably be more like a 45 and, and 33 because I pump out a few more games. But we're going to put the money in your pocket. That's that's how we roll. You know. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I mentioned Jesse. He was a little bit stuck in the mud for a two week period of time a couple weeks ago, and and I warned all of you that. Uh, watch out. I mean, now's the time to jump in because there's no way this is going to continue. I told you the same thing with Sean early in the year uh, when he was treading water in both the NFL and college football. And look where he is now at this point of the season. So once again, folks, um, you know, it's not always about uh, who's hot right now at the moment. It's about who has a track record to show you that they can win over the long haul. And both of these guys are, are, are the ticket and as well as myself and the other seven great handicappers over at sports, um, excuse me, gamblersworld.net. Uh, again, I'll go quickly through my stuff, college basketball, 37 and 25 since, uh, uh, over the last 62 picks, that's good for 62, 60%, excuse me, all sports since August the 4th, folks, 187 and 132. And there's that number that a lot of people, will say I could do that myself, 59%. Well, good luck with that because it's over four. It's uh, Let's see. It's over four months now. Uh, so at this point, I would say it's not a fluke. And dime betters, guys who bet $1,000 a game with me, over that course of time, they've made $42,320. Uh, NBA sides uh, since April 11th of this year, 48 and 20, 71%. College football since December 2nd of last year, over a year now, 70 and 48, 59%. NFL um, since week two, 44 and 30, 59%. And uh, that included six and two last week. And Sean, uh, I'm going to jump aboard uh, your close loss syndrome here. Six and two, and the two losses were by a combined um, one and a half points. So the bottom line is it, it, there's a fine line between six and two and eight and oh. Uh, and number one overall at the site since its inception in all sports and also number one in college basketball right now as we speak. Still early on, though. All right. If, um, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, I don't know why you haven't, but it's your prerogative. But for those of you who want to know, what goes into it, it's real simple. Number one, it's absolutely free to do so. No hidden agenda. Um, it, we're, there's no pranks up our sleeve. It's absolutely free. And uh, if you are on your mobile device or your smart TV, you'll see a black subscribe button right underneath. You just click on that. That will get you automatically subscribed for nothing. If you're on your PC, you'll see a WC logo in the bottom right-hand corner of your page. Uh, Just click on that, and it gets you subscribed for absolutely nothing. Now, I'm going to ask you to take one step further, okay? All of 30 seconds, if that. Uh, And this includes those of you who have subscribed and haven't done so. Go into your YouTube settings um, and just click on the alert notification bell for the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel, and you'll be notified immediately upon all six of our podcasts on a weekly basis being published. And don't forget, every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we go live, okay? We talked about the comments that we get on a lot of these archive. Uh, folks, if, if you really want to get an instant answer, and if you want to partake and disagree with us, that's okay as long as you keep it respectful, Okay. This is your opportunity. Every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we go live, us three, right here on the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. Jesse, there's a like button right underneath. Smash that like button. Smash that like button, folks. It's just a small token of your appreciation for the work, time, and effort we put in to giving you a quality podcast and making you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. 
Uh, I will be back later this afternoon with Mr. Paul Bovey as we'll be talking the NFL. And uh, these guys will be back with me tomorrow morning. We'll be discussing more college basketball action. Until then, uh, take care and God bless, folks. <laughs>